Tomorrow night, Major League Baseball will hold its annual first-year player draft, and even though the Yankees do not have a pick until the 55th overall selection, there still should be quite a bit of talent for the organization to pick from. For more now on the draft, we're joined by John Manuel, editor-in-chief of Baseball America. And John, from listening to draft experts like yourself, one thing about this year's draft that is a consensus is there's not a consensus number one pick. Do you share that assessment? Yeah, I do, and I feel like I was kind of driving the Carlos Rodon train last summer and, and in the fall that he was the consensus number one pick, and that was certainly coming from sources in the industry and a lot of scouting directors and, and really general managers, and the talk in the industry was that the Astros were prepare, preparing to spend a lot of money on Carlos Rodon at number one, but the NC State left-hander just didn't have the kind of spring that people thought he, could, he would have or that he could have, and his stuff backed up. He went six and seven. And the big thing is that he just didn't throw as hard, didn't command the fastball like he did last year. And now we have Brady Aiken, the left-hander out of the San Diego's Cathedral Catholic High School, at number one on our draft board. And I think that Aiken has actually kind of become the consensus number one, but it's almost by default. I want to ask you about Aiken because I find it interesting. For those who don't follow the draft as closely as you do, there hasn't been a, le a high school pitcher taken number one since 1991. Yankee fans will remember it was Brian Taylor. A lot of teams shy away from taking that high school pitcher first. John, what could Aiken do to change that? Why would teams want to pick this kid first? Well, the way one general manager put it to me this week is that, you know, high school pitchers are always loved until you get in that draft room and then the general manager comes in the room and, and they want quicker to the major league players and more polished players. But Brady Aiken is part of this new travel ball generation in high school baseball where he does have similar track record to a college player. Scouts have seen him since he was a high school freshman. He's from San Diego, so he plays baseball year-round. They've seen him in uh, international competition. He was the star for USA Baseball's 18U World Championship team. He pitched the gold medal game and won it, and he was a stud for that team. So he has track record. He has some polish. He a strike thrower, kind of like a Cole Hamels, who was from San Diego. That's one of the players he gets comp to. And then this year, you, the, the final piece for him was the added velocity. He popped 97 miles an hour in his first scrimmage of the year. He's maintained you know, 90 to 93, 94, and then popping those fives and sixes uh, throughout the season. So he's got three pitches. He's got some polish, especially for a high school pitcher. He added the last piece, was, piece which was that premium velocity for a left-handed pitcher. That's what's got him at the top of the board. And, you know, you've already mentioned Carlos Rodon, and that's obviously at NC State. It's a college pitcher. I think some teams who want it to go conservatively, that might be the type of choice they would make. One thing that I've noticed about you when you evaluate him is you love his confidence. What is it about his confidence that has jumped off the board for you? He just has complete disdain for the batter. You know, I think you kind of have to have that. Baseball's hard, and you have to believe in yourself. You have to have that confidence and that swagger, I guess, is the 21st century way to say confidence. But he's got swagger to spare. And uh, Carlos also has pitches to back that up. You know, for me, when he gets a little bit looser, which just means you know, a, a throwing program and, and throwing every five days and being on a pro schedule, I think a little bit more looseness for him uh, just within his body. He's a big-bodied kid, plus the durability of that big body. Plus that slider, which is the top of the scale slider. It's got some Steve Carlton comparisons on the slider. Uh, those all will add up to a frontline starter. So I definitely am a believer in Carlos. Maybe I've uh, met him too many times and had dinner with him, and, uh, and I'm uh, too much of a fan. But uh, I understand the evaluators who don't like him and see the stiffness a little bit and question the athleticism. I think he knows what he, ne what he needs to do to get better, and I think he'll will he will do better uh, and, and will be better as a pro than he was as a college junior. All right, John, I'm going to put you on the spot. You've been following amateur baseball for 17 years with Baseball America. The Yankees don't pick until 55th. I'm going to ask you to forecast a wild card. Throw a name or two out there that you think the Yankees could end up picking. I'll throw two out at you, and one of them is Pat Connaughton. Uh, and obviously Notre Dame tied in with the Yankees, uh, has played some football games in Yankee Stadium. Connaughton plays basketball for Notre Dame, and he's got, uh, they had a promotional poster this year for Connaughton that I loved. He's the only guy in Division I who struck out Jameis Winston, and then he dunked on Jabari Parker. So he's a two-sport athlete, played basketball, and I got a chance to see him play basketball against North Carolina down in Chapel Hill, and I was really impressed with his body control. I mean, you talk to scouts about him on the baseball diamond, that athleticism on the basketball court translates on the baseball diamond. So he's raw, uh, he does have a uh, fastball velocity, he's got the athletic body at 6'5", about 215.
ability to make adjustments on the mound combined with the athletic, the athleticism that gives you aptitude should make Pat Connaughton a really uh, worthwhile project at 55. The problem is he still wants to play basketball this fall and this winter for Mike Bray and the Fighting Irish. I'll also throw out J.B. Bukowskis out of uh, Virginia. He's a six-foot right-hander, but throws about 98 miles an hour. Sent a letter out to the team saying that he did not want to sign. He's committed to North Carolina, but the Yankees uh, scout pitching very well in my mind. Scott Lovecamp, who's kind of their pitching guru, is based in Virginia, where Bukowskis is. I bet he knows Bukowskis very well, and he's also only 17 years old, so kind of a lottery ticket, and the Yankees could spend a lot of money uh, out of their limit to buy Bukowskis out of his UNC commitment. John, let's go back to the 2012 draft. Second round pick, Peter O'Brien for the Yankees out of Miami. You look at the numbers that he's putting up this year between single and double A. This guy has 20 home runs already. What are Baseball America evaluators saying about him? Well, we actually just sent one of our writers, uh, Josh Norris, up to the Northeast to shoot some video of the Eastern League of, uh, when Portland played Trenton. And uh, he talked to several scouts up there about Peter O'Brien. And we saw him in the Fall League as well when I was here at MLB Network. And, you know, Peter O'Brien's power is top of the scale. You know, he was a third-round pick the year before the Yankees got him. Uh, out of Bethune-Cookman College when he was drafted by the Rockies and didn't sign. So usually you don't see the college senior who bets on themselves, comes back to school, and gets more money. And O'Brien did, and then he got to go to the Yankees. You know, we described him as a, a Jim Lairitz kind of type coming up because he's a catcher, but not really a catcher. Maybe a first baseman. They've tried him some at third base. I think they've passed on that. He's been a little bit in the outfield corners. His best position is batter's box. You know, top of the scale power. You look at the strikeout-walk ratio, Jack, and it's really not great right now. So... He's going to have to be a little bit more patient in his big league uh, pitchers. I think he's a big league role player. I'm not sure he's an everyday player because of the lack of selectivity. And I think you have to have some questions about the pitch recognition. But when he gets a fastball in the zone, he does damage. John, I thank you for the insight. I know it's been busy for you throughout this week and these days. And tomorrow gets busier. So we appreciate you joining us. Jack, it was my pleasure. Thanks for asking.